The Mandalorian Chapter 22 was a disaster. Interest is already low with this show. Chapter 22 might have been the breaking point. This episode was not received well by the Star Wars fandom. It was a gigantic failure. I was a little surprised this episode was hated so much, mainly because I think it's all trash. I rip apart every episode, yet there was something specifically about this episode that really hit the fandom and hit it hard. Good. Good. Maybe this is exactly what people need to motivate them to join the movement to hashtag Avenge Star Wars. Here is my review for Chapter 22. The episode starts off with this. Who cares about fate? I love you. And I will always love you. This is supposed to be Star Wars. This scene is set up to showcase Bo-Katan's old crew. They have a new leader. They're mercenaries. Guns for hire. <laughs> there was a tease at the end of Chapter 21 that the Mandalorians helped Moff Gideon escape. However, it was not mentioned once in this episode. We have two episodes left. Maybe they'll talk about it then. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe fuck yourself. Bo-Katan is able to track down her old crew for, um, reasons. Because she's a strong whammon. How did she know where they were exactly? I don't know. Who cares? Their ship is taken over and redirected. They've taken control of the ship. I guess we're going for a ride. They need to meet with the leaders before being allowed to meet with the Mandalorians. Special cameos in this episode, the leaders of this planet are Jack Black and Lizzo. This is exactly what we want Star Wars to be, right? A circus. He oversaw the rebuilding of this planet on which my family served as nobility since it was originally settled and we fell in love. We fell in love. We did fall in love. <laughs> then, if it already wasn't cringe, we got another Grogu money shot. Up until this point in the episode, Grogu's made a lot of cute, constipated noises, but they actually had him flip into someone's arms again, copying what they did earlier in the season. Grogu flipping and eating food. <laughs> <laughs> Grogu scarfing down another meal! Ah! How many times are they going to use this before the shills realize that it's all trash? If there weren't already enough celebrity cameos, Christopher Lloyd is in the episode. Marty! You've gotta come back with me! Where? Back to Avenge Star Wars! Wait a minute, Doc, what are you talking about? What happens to Star Wars in the future? What, is Luke become an asshole or something? Doc Brown is in charge of all the droids, which are all rehabbed Imperial droids. A lot of them are malfunctioning. In order to meet with the Mandalorians, Dan and Bo-Katan are forced to look into it. Grogu is not present because even the writers know Grogu is a useless character that just gets in the way. Din starts messing with the battle droids. Out of the hundreds of droids, he kicks three, and he found the problem. I call it luck. In my experience, there's no such thing as luck. The battle droid runs away, displays super speed and super strength. Din and bo chase after it. I've never seen anything like this in Star Wars. What the hell is going on? Didn't Jon Favreau watch the prequels, The Clone Wars? Why is this droid all of a sudden very OP? I don't know. Who cares? After they kill the cannon-breaking super droid, this leads them to a droid bar. And Din's character development took a step backwards. I thought he was now more accepting of droids. But in this episode, he's back to being triggered by them. You can check my registry. We are in full compliance with planetary hierarchy. If you don't start answering questions, I'll yank your memory circuit and dissect it back at the lab. Even Star Wars Sexplained had an issue with this. He seems to have gone backwards on his feelings towards droids. He's threatening the droid bartender and telling Bo-Katan droids can't be reasoned with. That part of his characterization seemed inconsistent with me. Like, I thought we moved past all this, Din. 
The next Lee takes them to the droid morgue, where I thought we saw Biscuit Bitch at first. I just thought she ate too many biscuits. But it turns out it's not her, it's just a criminal that Circus Film hired to be in the episode. After that, it's revealed that Doc Brown is a rat. He programmed the droids to malfunction because he doesn't like Jack Black. Really? That's sweet. <laughs> Doc Brown is arrested, Din and Bo-Katan are given the key to the city, Grogu is knighted by the fat ass, some real cringe shit. And then they are allowed to see the Mandalorians. Makes you wonder why they had to go through this adventure in the first place. Hashtag filler. Bo-Katan challenges the toxic male for leader of the mercenaries. I have not said anything about Bo-Katan's abilities up until this point. She's qualified Mandalorian. Based on this duel alone, she seems like the better warrior. That's mainly because of weapons and the jetpack. That's fine with me. She's a strong female character. However, the one major advantage the toxic male has of Bo-Katan is strength. Bo-Katan is a good fighter, but there's a reason Valentina Shevchenko doesn't fight Brandon Moreno or any of the men in the UFC. They'd fucking destroy her if they got their hands on her. Right here, bo eats a left hook, drops her to a knee. She recovers. Okay. He jetpacks her into the ship. That could have caused serious injury to her chest and back. But she's alright. Takes another, more powerful left hook and just eats it. She's got a fucking chin. Then bo takes a big kick to the chest. She should be down. She gets hit again with the left and her right, and she falls off the ship, but amazingly recovers instantly mid-fall, unfazed, and turns that exchange into a positive one. This allows her to get on top of him with a knife to his throat. bo wins the battle, but there's still the Darksaber stuff. Mando mansplains that bo is the rightful owner because he was captured like a little bitch in Chapter 17, and she rescued him. The toxic male agrees, based on nothing, just his personal feelings on the matter, and everyone else just kind of nods and agrees. So now the Darksaber truly belongs to Bo-Katan. I've seen some people talking about this, criticizing it. The logic makes sense to me. I question why she even gave it back to him in Episode 2. Din had to be rescued, and he can't even use it properly. However, what about the scene in the droid morgue? Looked like Din saved her life with the Darksaber. <laughs> they kept that information from the Mandalorians. <laughs> when it comes down to it, it's really like the helmet thing. It's a superstition. All that matters is the people accept her as the leader. The major problem with all this in the Darksaber is this was another thing that was built up in Season 2. Bo-Katan challenging Din Djarin for the Darksaber. People were looking forward to it. And apparently, that will never happen. That has all been resolved. The Mandalorian Chapter 22 was a disaster. A lot of people seem to be turning on this show. If you're not one of them, I don't want to hear that this shit was fire, brah. That season four and the Ahsoka show is going to be dope. There's nothing cool about Disney Star Wars. There's nothing to look forward to. There's certainly nothing to celebrate at Star Wars Celebration. Even the biggest Disney show of them all, Star Wars Sex Explained, is questioning it all. This season has been doing things that on paper sound good, but in execution I'm not really digging. This episode's kind of goofy story just isn't my favorite flavor of Star Wars. It's just not for me so much. I think I would have liked it more if it were earlier in the season, but oh well. I am growing stronger in the dark side every day, but I need more nights. Become a knight, subscribe to the channel, join the Knights of Melvin Discord, help plot to take down Disney and all their shills. The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. Oh!